Thank you for what I can only hope is a flattering introduction. My name is Ross Lockwood, and I'm going to be presenting today a talk entitled Real Life on Simulated Mars. And the reason that the talk is called that is because I'm broadcasting to you today from the high seas habitat on the slopes of Mauna Loa in Hawaii. High seas stands for the Hawaii Space Exploration Analog and Simulation. And what I'd like to talk about today is a little bit about what this habitat is, what it does, and what living here is all about. Now, before we get started, I'd like to address some of the housekeeping. The first thing, and the reason that I'm not there with you today, is that I'm, this is day 54 of uh, the 120 day program for the high seas, and I can't just get up and leave the habitat. Not only that, but we're simulating the speed of light delay between Earth and Mars. So I can't simply Skype with you today to give my presentation. This is a pre-recorded presentation that I've sent to the organizers at Logicon, and they're going to be playing it for you. So there are two ways to interact with me. The first is to ask video questions at the end of this talk, and those will be sent to me here at the High Seas Habitat where I'll prepare uh, video responses and send them back to you. The total round trip time will take 40 minutes and uh, that represents your lunch hour. So it should work out pretty well as long as the uh, communication network holds out. Another way to contact me is by using my Twitter handle at Ross Lockwood. And if you tweet to me during the presentation, of course it will take 20 minutes for the message to arrive to me. I can then respond and it will take 20 minutes for the message to get posted on Twitter. But in that way, if you have small questions that can be answered, I can do that as soon as I get those responses. Please use the hashtag high seas and the hashtag Logicon. The first thing that I like to show you is my living quarters and that's where I'm broadcasting to you from now. So we have a very small uh, room that we're in here and I'm going to give you a brief little turnaround. So you can see behind me I've got uh, pictures from family and friends that I've put up on the wall. Uh, this is my bed and I just barely fit in it. My feet touch the, uh, the bottom end of the wall. My head is almost over the edge here. I've got my little studio set up today. So I've got organizational drawers, my uh, tablet, laptop, and then some storage. And other than that, the room is actually quite small. I've got a little shelf up here and uh, some hangers on the door. But for the most part, during the day, we spend most of our time outside in the main habitat, which is where I'm going to take you next. So this is the upstairs. Uh, there are six doors up here, one for each crew member, and a seventh door, which is half of the bathroom. So the bathroom is actually quite interesting as far as the habitat is concerned, because it's got a composting toilet. And this toilet is very unique in that it doesn't take any water. So the way that it works is you use the toilet as usual and instead of flushing it with water you have a crank at the bottom. You rotate the drum and it mixes the waste into this composting mix that after four months you can actually use to fertilize plants or your garden. So it's actually quite an interesting device. Other than that, the bathroom's pretty standard, sink, organization, and uh, that's the upstairs. The downstairs bathroom has the shower. So you can see from here that we are actually on the second floor, and if we look down, you can see the main habitat area. And I'm gonna take you down there next. So the ground floor here is what you could consider the common area, and this is where we do most of our activities that aren't specialized in one way or another. From here you can see the shape of the dome, you can see the second floor and our bedrooms. On this side here, this is our EVA station, so this is where uh, we suit up when we want to go outside. These are the packs that go in the back of these suits, so these would be full of ice water. They've got a pump inside, 
that circulates that ice water through tubing inside of the EVA suit to cool the participant. We have a little radio station over here where we charge our radios for EVAs. And on this side we have a little geological sample analysis station that Commander Stedman is uh, setting up. Of course right here, this is Commander Stedman. Hello. Lucy just got done with her exercise for the day. This is the only window that we have in the habitat. And if you have a look outside, you can see that our view really doesn't have anything too interesting other than the lava flows of Mauna Loa. Of course, front and center are our uh, gray water tanks because we're not generating any um, septic waste. So these tanks will fill with uh, used dishwater and shower water, but never any uh, toilet waste. This next area over here is our kitchen. And as you can see, we have a number of small appliances, a toaster oven for baking, a small fridge for leftovers, and really the, the meat of the matter are these induction cookers that we use with pots and pans to heat our food during the day. And our food primarily consists of dehydrated fruits, vegetables, and meats. So most of them are stored here, and you can see kind of just what a selection of uh, these dehydrated foods looks like. So we've got leek flakes, tomato dices, green peas, corn, hash browns, mushrooms, all sorts of yummy foods. So through this door uh, we have some of the more interesting systems inside the habitat. On the left hand side over here we have what is known as the telemetry room. And this is where all of the data from all of the sensors around the HAB, which number 118, come in and are integrated using these little units here. So these are called digital acquisition units. And all of the wires that go in carry signals from sensors that are placed around the HAB, CO2 sensors, temperature sensors, uh, power consumption sensors. And each of the boxes is a little computer that hosts a web page. And these uh, computers all broadcast their information to a central server and this central server has uh, a landing page that tells us all of the, the current systems of the habitat. The interesting thing is that this is all done on a local area network which means that from our own computers mine up in my room we can view and control a lot of these systems. On the other side of the habitat over here is our laundry facility and this is a low flow um, washing machine and a dryer that we don't often have to use because we can hang dry most of our things. This experiment is one of Lucy's and it's an Orbitec plant growth chamber. So inside here we have vegetables that we are growing and hopefully we're going to eat them in a little while and you can see just how big the peas are getting already. Finally, inside the main habitat, we have a science lab. So this is where we store samples uh, for our psychological research and where Lucy has a few more plants growing. So you can see her experiments here. Some lettuce, using some of the Martian soil. The downstairs bathroom is much like the upstairs bathroom, another composting toilet, and a shower. And if you can imagine, uh, we're allowed eight minutes of shower time per week, but the way I've been showering is uh, doing a two minute shower every two days, which works out to less than seven minutes of shower per week. The last part of the habitat here is the airlock and the sea can. And the airlock is where we need to stand for five minutes uh, before we can go out on an EVA. And this is the door that leads outside. So in a few more minutes, I'm gonna take you outside and show you some of the systems that are outside of the habitat. Inside the sea can, we have storage areas and a little workshop. So this workshop area has all the tools that we need to repair the systems that are inside the habitat, as well as spare parts for some of the network equipment. Our food is stored in these bins and uh, we actually have more than enough food for the entire four months. As it turns out, we haven't been eating as much as we anticipated. 
On the right hand side, this is the system that collects the solar energy and converts it into useful power for the habitat. So these controllers here take energy directly from the solar panels and right now this set of solar panels is generating 87 volts at uh, sorry 55 volts at 6.4 amps and that power is being used to run the lights and the systems inside the habitat so right now we're generating 1.2 kilowatts of solar energy and we're only consuming 700 watts of AC power at the moment that surplus is used to charge these large battery banks and each of these battery banks can store 10 kilowatt hours for a total of 20 kilowatt hours. At the moment this battery is charged to 100 percent and the mode that it's set to is discharge. So during the day both of these batteries are charged all the way to 100 percent. The noise that you hear just turning on is inside of this wooden box that's our water pump that supplies the pressure we need for all the plumbing systems inside. Now that's basically it as far as the habitat systems are concerned, on the inside anyway. So the next thing I'm going to do is take you outside. So you have suited up here and you're standing in the airlock and you need to go outside. You can go outside you have to wait five minutes. To simulate what it would be like to have the air pressure in the airlock drop to the level of a Martian atmosphere. When five minutes have elapsed, you open the door and you step outside. Okay, so the five minute countdown is over. We're going to open the door and we're going to step outside. Follow me. It's a beautiful day. On Mauna Loa, you can see Mauna Kea off in the distance there. Alright, and this is our little neck of the woods. Nothing but red ground and uh, gravel stones. So we're on top of the center cone here, and as you can see behind me, Commander Stedman is taking some geological samples. And uh, we've had to characterize just about everything about this feature up here. So if I continue turning around, you'll be able to see Annie and the hazmat sink behind me. And if you look on further, you can see the dome and Mauna Kea off in the distance. Now, we're about 8,000 feet on Mauna Loa. So if you look off in that direction over here, you can actually see the top of Mauna Loa. It's at 12,000 feet, and from here it doesn't look like there's much elevation change at all. But between where we're standing and that ridge that you see way off in the distance, there's about 4,000 feet different. From this vantage point, you should be able to see the dome behind me and the solar array that we need to generate power. The solar array consists of 36 solar panels, each capable of generating several hundred watts during full sunlight and a fraction of that when it's cloudy out. This supplies us with several kilowatt hours per day that let us run out all the systems inside the habitat. And they also charge the battery bank inside the sea cannon that you see that lets us continue running all of our systems at night. So here's the south facing side of the dome. And on top of the shipping container, we've got our solar water heater, which is these black panels and that uh, shiny metal bit that you see. The solar water here is capable of heating water well above the boiling point, but it's currently set to about 50 degrees Celsius, which gives us a pretty warm shower once that hot water is flowing. This is our water reserve out here for drinking water, shower water, and uh, just general purpose water. And as you can see, they're about 500 gallons each. Now, one thing you notice when we're out here is that we have a sensor on the top of one of the tanks that actually measures the height of the water in both. But the entire habitat is wired with these sensors that let us know how all of the systems are behaving. This is another one of our backup systems that we have here, and it's our hydrogen fuel cell. And as you can see on the right hand side, we don't have any hydrogen cylinders at the moment. 
Now this is actually where the fuel cell is, so hydrogen will pass through these cartridges and generate the energy we need for our backup power if we ever uh, fail to have enough uh, battery backup to take us through at night. And that might happen on a day where we're having a significant amount of rain and cloud that prevents our solar panel from charging the batteries. Sadly, that's all the time I have for you. There's so much more to say about the high seas habitat and about life here. So if you do want to learn more about that, I have a personal blog on spincrisis.net. And you can also find the crew blogs on high-seas.org. So now it's time for you to record some video questions for me and forward them on so that I can respond to them after lunch. I look forward to seeing your questions. Bye for now.